Hey everybody, and welcome back to the non-league adventure with me, GWFM, playing as ECFC in the back of this Premier League. Uh, it's end of the season, so it's uh, end of season review, and let's get straight to the uh, players to see how they've performed. So what I've done is I've got rid of people out on loan, which does include Sean Jess. I'll look at him at the end just to see how he's fared. Um, but if you look at, at the top, you know, we've got the, I'm starting with the uh, appearances. Roy Brewer, the leader, leading the way with 37 appearances, 4 off the bench, 24 goals and 7 assists, but average rating of 7.39. Exceptional performance from him once again. If you look into his uh, previous achievements, it's his fifth season with us, and it's uh, it's not his worst, but it's not his best neither. Uh, obviously his best was back here when he got 7.53, but that was all the way back in League 1. So it was playing against weaker opponents, and obviously he hadn't developed as well. He got 18 in the league, um, 18 goals that is, and he's, he's proved to be a complete snip. It's not his fifth year, it's his fourth year, sorry. But um, 4.5 million for a player of his calibre, looking at his stats here, he's even still improving. He's 25 years old now, so he's not going to improve much well, but as you can see, a four-star player. Um, and he's, you know, he's, he's just been, he's single-handedly bailed us out once again with all his goals, you know, getting his key results. I mean, like, emphasising the last episode, getting one goal against Hull, albeit it was, it wasn't to, it wasn't going to count for anything. Um, if you look here, we've got some interest in him. Derby and Reading, who have both had decent seasons uh, in the Premier League, uh, finished both, finished higher than us. I'm hoping he's not going to be swayed because if we need, if we want to be successful, I think he's got to stay at the club. After that, uh, we had we've got Giovanni Sanchez. He played 35 times starting and six as a sub. Got four goals, 18 assists. Absolutely incredible. This this duo here, I think, are key. I've got to keep both of these players for next season. Uh, 7.66 average rate, which is absolutely fantastic. He's declining a little bit here. Still classed as a wonder kid. Is still only 19 years old. He turns 20 in the summer. Uh, and as you can see, four and a half star player, crazy paving to have him here. Cost is 6.75 million, and as you can see there, he's worth 19.5 million now. If uh, if a big team that's not playing in the Premier League come in for him and offer say 40, 50 million, I'd be I'd be stupid not to take it because I'm pretty sure I should be able to find another one that's uh, of this this uh, capability, should I say? Because he's he's class, simple as, and uh, I've been very impressed with him um, in the league. Uh, he got f four goals and 16 assists, but overall, been been absolutely fantastic. Next on the list for appearances is John Thompson, the goalkeeper. 33 appearances, did get a few, got an injury, so missed a few games. Unfortunately for him, um, I'm undecided whether I want to keep him or not because he's not been amazing. He's 24 years old, he's nearly at the peak. He's got some interest in him uh, from Crystal Palace, so I may decide to let him go this season. I'm not sure. Um, whether I haven't decided fully yet. Um, don't get me wrong, he's done alright, but he's still conceded 54 goals, um, which is 54 goals too many, really, in my eyes. But uh, yeah, we've had some poor results. It could be the defence are letting him down, but the fact that we strengthened his defence and it's exactly the same is leading me to think that it's a goalkeeper I need to change. Um, and next in the appearances is Reese Oxford. A lot of rotation in, with the defenders, but Reese Oxford played the most. Um, and as you can see, he's still valued at £6 million. We brought him in for 10 uh, which obviously is not ideal. Um, but he might have a, a new lease of life next season as a defensive midfielder uh, rotating with Pedro Pedro. We'll have to wait and see. Because um, I've been, you know, it's only been two games, but I've been quite impressed uh, recently with both his and Pedro Pedro's performances, albeit Reese Oxford's been off the bench. Uh, and then finally, what I'll do for this particular... Um, Part, i.e. the appearances, Lewis. Lewis has been, he's been all right. Um, you know, he's got. He says he's only got two assists and one goal, which strikes you as as a bit shit, really. But he's got 7.2 average rating, which to me means he's not done too bad. Um, you know, he's that's that's a be all and end all. He creates. A, he's got 106 key passes. If you look at Rye Brew and, and Sanchez, they're going to lead the way. We'll get onto them shortly. But uh, I'm going to move on to the goals tab. Um, Castillo, the forgotten man because he got injured at the end of the season. He's been very impressive. He got 12 goals in 20, 20 appearances in his debut season in the Premier League, uh, coming from a foreign country as well, which is always hard to adapt for some players. And I think he t did take a little time to adapt. It took him a while to get scoring. Then he went through another barren patch, 
Uh, but it's doing alright, got 7.34 average rating as well, which is very, very handy indeed. Then you've got Nathan Adua. I'll probably look to maybe move this guy on as much as it pains him. He's 29 years old now, so he's not going to be very good for much longer. And it's just the fact he only got nine goals this season, uh, in total five in the league, which obviously the bread and butter is the league, and he's just not good enough, um, unfortunately. Next on the list was Russell Russell. Got five goals in a recent video. I think uh, they won with all the highlights. I did say that he'd scored his first goal this season. It appears that I was incorrect. It, it, that was actually his fourth goal of the season. Um, and yeah, he's 25 years old now. He's not valued as highly as what he used to be. But he's he's done a job for us last couple of years, three years. Um, coming for less, just just less than a million. And he's done okay this season. A 7.04 rating, five goals. Only the one assist though from the wing, which is kind of concerning. And finally again, it's uh, Sanchez again with his... Uh, you know, four goals, but you, as you can see there, there's only two players scoring goals, really, if in the scheme, whole scheme of things. Nathan Adua tipping in with a few, but in the league, obviously, not enough, uh, which, was, which was a shame. Assists, as you can see, uh, leading away to Sanchez, we've already covered him, i say he's been our player of the season, really. Uh, Roy Brewer obviously chipped in with some assists, as has Adua with a couple, uh, and Castillo and Villinden and Emmanuel all share three as, as well. So key passes, um, leading the way is Roy Brewer, believe it or not, um, which I find a bit of a surprise, uh, followed by Adua, which again, it's a striker that's playing the key passes, although Adua is on the same key passes as uh, Sanchez, but his passing accuracy is better than uh, Sanchez's, which is a, a bit of a shame, really. Um, Castillo chipped him 132, but in a lot less appearances, uh, and Emmanuel got 117, which is quite nice for a, a, for a fullback. Passing accuracy, the most accurate is Willie Eskalainen, but he's only played like 10 games, so, you know, there is that. 82% uh, for Pedro Pedro, which is showing exactly what I mean. He's uh, been quite good, really, this season. I've been, uh, I know it says he's only got a 6.91 average rating, but I think, I think his best is yet to come. Probably next season, I think, in the defensive midfield role. It's going to be very exciting. I don't really count goalkeepers in the passing accuracy, because when they're kicking it short, which they have done all season, um, it's obviously going to be high because it's rare, rare that they give the ball away. Um, Leon Walsh tipped in with 80% from a central midfield roaming playmaker role, which is not bad. Uh, followed by Lewis and uh, Emmanuel and Tofolo. So they've all done quite well. Player of the matches, Sanchez has got eight. So it's clear that he's going to be the player of the season. Uh, Roy Brewer in second place with five. And then the only other player to really get anywhere near or oh, say anyway, he is ahead of the rest of them. Is Castillo got two player of the matches? Quite a few people got one, but uh, more often than not, it was Sanchez or Brewer. Average rating. This is the one that matters to me in a team that's been uh, poor really overall. Got some really big performers like uh, Sanchez done really well. He's in the running for uh, player of the young player of the year. Uh, then you've got Brewer with a 7.39. Emmanuel's done really well again, 7.37. I've got two strong right-backs at the minute. I'm really happy with both of them, um, it seems, going in, going forward. Castillo's done well as, as well. He, he's going to be more than adequate backup uh, striker, I think. Uh, and then you've got Lewis, uh, Lukunku, who's just come in. Uh, Adua, uh, all all these above a 7. Uh, I just want to look at, highlight the, the key, uh, the, the new transfers, such as Lukunku and uh, the Dick. Um... They've done really well since they've come in, if I'm being completely honest. They've got over a 7, so which is showing that they, they've got a good uh, adapt adaptability attribute, uh, which is very pleasing to see. The other one is Julian Martin. He did play a, lot, lo a little bit better in the last couple of games, uh, as you can see here. He got a 7.5 and a 7, which boosted his rating probably only just above a 7. Um, but, you know... As you can see there, his passing stats 63%, which is, a, is shocking for a ball-playing defender. He's probably been one of the reasons why we did concede quite a few goals, just giving the ball ball away sloppily. But it's not his fault. His passing stat is only 9. It's probably my fault. It's probably similar in vain to uh, Akil Wright was, um, just because of his passing. So, a bit of a change in tactics. I might stick with the one I'm, I'm using, uh, which I will go into it now. This one here. It seems to be quite effective um, in the last couple of games. If I get the right players in, I mean, Sanchez is probably going to be all right there, I would imagine. Um, a doer, of course, is not probably the answer. He didn't play very well against Man United, but it was Man United. Um, 
Tofolo's had a decent season at left back with a 7.17 uh, average rating. It's making me think, do I keep him? Um, he's 29 years old though, so it's probably unlikely. Uh, De Silva, probably, I, I might give him one more, one more year here and see if he can fare any better because he just hasn't been good enough this season. 6.85, poorest out of the whole side, worst player of the season. But this season seemed to prove quite fruitful for us. Um, any other like recommendations or formations and how you think I should play um, with this team um, on where you think I need to or, and or where I need to strengthen? I think an inside forward is definitely on the cards for the left wing, so preferably a right-footed uh, left midfielder. That would be of benefit because we've got Adekanya West, who is probably on his last legs here, he's worth valued at a million, I'll probably maybe get a million for him, but he's not the quickest, he's left footed, so as an inside forward, a highlight there, he's, he's not a full pie chart, he's probably not that bad to be fair, but I don't know, I still think he's fast enough, if I'm honest with you. Other than that, I think we're okay, we probably could do a better roaming playmaker than uh, Lewis, who has done very well, he, you know, he's been, he's been good. Um, but as I say, he doesn't get enough assists really for my liking. The, the downside is Roy Brewer drops to a three-star player playing as a false nine because his passing is only nine and his vision's only 11, so there is that unfortunately. But he did score uh, in both games, so I'm quite buoyed by his performance at the end of the season. He's still going to be able to do a job for us. I'll have to wait and see. I have to thought of tying with a complete forward here as well, which could be a benefit of benefit, if, uh, and I might try it in, the, in a pre-season friendly next season. Right, so, just highlighting who's won what and who's finished where. You've got Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City in the uh, Champions League places. Stoke City finishing fifth, uh, credible fifth actually. They, they were like third for quite a long time and unfortunately they dropped away. Um, Chelsea finishing outside. I think they've got, the, they won the cup so they're in, in uh, the Europa League anyway. Um, down the bottom as you can see, Brighton, Southampton and Hull go down. Uh, dropping down into the Championship. Uh, it's going to be Fulham and Aston Villa, as well as um, Leicester and Watford, who came up. Look at that, Leicester with 100 points. They're going to, I bet they're going to be a tricky side next season. I'll be honest with you. If they're getting 30 wins and 100 points. That's that's a very good record, to be fair. And, you know, Fulham, balance of play, they missed out by one point. They deserve to go up, but more often than not, it's not that team that go up. Look at uh, Brighton in real life. This se the season just gone. Uh, Aston Villa, despite losing 17 games, could be going up, uh, which is kind of shocking. Leeds finishing in a disappointing 16th. It's uh, kind of ironic that they're finishing the same position as us, really, because we finished 16th, which is actually worse than last season, and we spent a lot of money, so that's kind of worrying. Um, Plymouth Exeter and Rotherham going down from that division. Let's have a look at League One. Again, Blackburn or South End are going up, um, but alongside Norwich and Bristol City. The team's going down. Leighton Orient, Mansfield, Hartlepool and Preston going, going down to League 2. That's a bit of a surprise. I like Preston. League 2, um, Barnet have won the final. So they're going to be joining. Uh, Bristol Rovers and Cambridge and, and Northampton. And there you go. Sixth place is good enough to go up. Uh, FC Halifax. Oh man, Bood. Bood, what are you doing? Bood. Recognise any of these players? <laughs> Probably not. Have a quick look in there. Let us know. You're going down, mate. You're going back in, back out of the football league. What are you doing? Ah, oh, never mind. Look at that Wigan down in league, league, league two. Who, who went there? You remember one player, don't you, Surely. Where is it? There is the shop. How many red cards has he had? Only one. Sorry, two. One against us. If you remember, all the way back, beginning of the season. Um, but yeah, they have mid table. I'm just looking at teams that are low down where they shouldn't be really, um, and that's definitely one of them. Panorama National League, where we started with Eastleigh. Tranmere are going back into the Football League. They've beaten Bolton. That's a bit of a surprise, really, although Bolton, uh, you know... I'm not being funny, though, but look at this. Bolton have got... In fact, I don't even need to click onto Bolton. Bolton have got James Vincent, who's a 35-year-old. And look at his attributes there for the Panorama National League. How class is he? Even though he's 35, his natural fitness is 20. I mean, yes, his, his rest of his physicals are, are dropping like... Uh, like a fat beat, but um, yeah, chuffy now. That's a right player to get, but it wasn't enough because Boston United and Tramier, Tramier going back into the football league, probably deservedly so with the points tallies that they've both got. Uh, any teams down here that shouldn't be? Scunthorpe, we're finishing mid-table with one of our players. 
Uh, there he is, look, Jake Jackson. Probably not going to be quite good enough. Showed a lot of uh, promise early on, but is now deemed as like a one and a half star player, which is obviously a load of shite. And then finally, we'll say final. We'll go down two really quick to south, and then we'll go back up to north because obviously that's where we started it at uh, Kaiser Ashton. Cheltenham, obviously Cheltenham used to be a football league club. Uh, going back into the Vanarama National League along with Gosport of all teams. Um, some teams down here. Torquay, struggling. Former football league side. Um, Staying some massive in it. That was terrible. Yeah, so there's uh, no one else really there. And then finally, we'll look at the Vanarama National North. Where have Curzon Ashton finished? Well, they haven't finished in the final of the playoff because uh, Darlington 1883 have gone up in place of Southport, a team that came down with Curzon Ashton when I got relegated with them. And uh, Curzon Ashton have finished 8th. So they're staying there for, I want to say, a Sixth consecutive season, might be seventh. Uh, I'll have a look at them in a moment. But FC United have gone up into the Vanarama National League along with Darlington. Uh, so yeah, um, Ilkston, uh, Ilkeston, uh, Histon. Remember Histon. Quick note, Histon. That's how I felt when England got beat by Iceland. Histon beat Leeds when Leeds were in League One in the FA Cup. It was absolutely appalling and the most embarrassing thing I've ever felt uh, towards uh, my Leeds side. But um, Histon. Uh, sorry, but Iceland, that kind of was the lowest point for uh, England, as, as an England fan. Curzon Ashton then. Is anyone still here? We've still got Shola, Shola Ayula. Oh, we've still got some players that I, I left here. Shola Ayula, who's still the captain, of course. Um, 27 years old now. I signed him when he, I believe when he was like 19 or 20. Henry Rowlandson signed him from Leeds when he first got released. I think he was 18 years old. I might be wrong. He might have been 19 years old. But yeah, you can see there. Shamal George was a decent goalkeeper back then. I mean, you look at his stats there for a, a Vanarama National North side, and he's not, very, he's not actually that bad. He joined us from Liverpool when I was in charge of them. And I think, looking at it, that is it. Let's have a quick look at their under-21s in case there's anyone there. Yeah, Freddie Howe's still there on a non-contract. Been there a hell of a long time now. Even longer than... Uh, yeah, he joined us in our promotion season. Played three games towards that. I've not played tons of times, but he, he gets an odd game here and there. But he was certainly one of the players that I brought in. And, uh, it was Freddie Yao, an Ivorian centre midfielder. And that's it, yeah, so Kaiser Ashton doing okay, I suppose, and not getting relegated out of the football uh, league. Uh, anything else? We'll have a, look, a quick look at finance, finances. We're now on to just shy of £15 million in the, in the the balance uh, that's because of the end of the season winnings we're still making money on a weekly basis well probably not anymore because we're not playing anymore but every time we were playing we were making like uh, about 700 grand a, a, a game so we're laughing really um, obviously uh, our transfer revenue got dropped because we went into the red um, over over the close season I'll probably look to uh, see if I can upgrade the training facilities again and the youth facilities uh, Another year or so, and then we're moving into a new stadium. Uh, let's just see what it gets called. I'm hoping, because of this reason here, which if you weren't aware already, um, I'm actually a club legend. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be the GW365 Arena. Obviously, I've changed my name to FM now. Uh, it's kind of too late. I'm already called that. Unless I can set myself a, a nickname. Interesting names uh, have got, got a good opinion and a bad opinion of me. So that's interesting. And as you can see over here, uh, looking at the stats, 20 attacking and defending. Tacticals 19, technicals 20, 20, uh, mental, uh, motivating is 20, but that was always the case. Player knowledge is 20, believe it or not. Uh, Young knowledge has gone up to 17, it was 16 last time I checked. Discipline, yeah, I'm probably not quite um, good enough at, at the discipline side. 16 for man management, that's okay as well. Adaptability is only one, I don't think that can inc increase unless you move um, countries. Uh, determination. I'm a bit, a bit disappointed that it's eight, but uh, never mind. But yeah, as you can see, we've played 504 games. We've only won 227, but it's only going to go down because we're in the top division, and it, it seems that we're going to continue to struggle unless we get some, you know, major investment in in key areas. Uh, I think that tactic has probably passed its sell by date. It scores a lot of goals. Don't get me wrong, but we concede a hell of a lot. There's, I don't think there's that enough defence. You know, the, there's that shield in front of the back four. Um, I think it's required for this division, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and give that um, you know the 4-5-1 uh, 
uh, a go and see how I fare with that in early stages. Um, unless someone, of course, gives us another tactic to maybe try. I find it incredibly uh, weird that Roy Brewer is only a favoured personnel, by the way. He should be easily in here. Um, and you, you look at the, some of the players. In fact, let's have a quick look at some of the players that have, that have since left. We've still got Jake Kizantala. He's been out on loan this season and he looks like he's done okay. 7.08. For sleep, but they, they did finish mid-table, unfortunately. Um, Josh Murray, he left in the in, in the January transfer window, went to Port Vale of all teams, dropped really dropped down the divisions, um, and didn't play that well actually. He got 6.65. In fact, he left at the beginning of the season, I think. Yes, he did. Um, so look at other players. We've got obviously we've still got Liam Walsh, Geraldo, 32 years old now, still uh, quite quick. Um, He's done. He's hardly played in League One. I mean, he was getting games for us in the Premier League. Oh, the, maybe not the Premier League, but the Championship. Um, yeah, got ten games in the Championship and played all right. But yet, goes to League Two and doesn't get a game. Okay then. Adon Abbey, remember him? Uh, he's left at the beginning of this season. Oh, actually, he's still here. What am I talking about? He went out on loan. He must, he must have come back already. It looks like he's had a half decent season. Yeah, yeah, he's still, he's still with us. He's, uh, I don't know, he went out on loan. I thought we'd sold him, but apparently not. Um, Callum Saunders went to Mansfield this season, the beginning of the year. Um, not done that well, really. The overall rating of 6.64. Um, still looking half decent, though. His finishing, I think, has gone down. Theo Walton is a player I never used. Started off at 20 years old and starts off at uh, Leighton Orient. In fact, no. He starts off at Cardiff. Uh, on loan at Eastley. That's the season Eastley got promoted bef before I joined. Uh, he's been at Leighton Orient ever since. If you do a, um, a testimonial very soon. Uh, Bobby Moser, uh, that's a player that we inherited. He's 29 years old. Uh, was very decent actually. He, he, very similar to to Murray uh, in the regard it, regarding his stats. Tried it out in League One. Didn't really fare very well. Uh, so ended up coming to Grimsby and played all season. That's okay for him. Didn't do that well though. And Jack Senior, Ginger Quiff. Check this out. Uh, 28 years old now. Um, playing at Barnet uh, after being on loan a couple of times from us before he left. And he's been playing quite regular, but he's not been performing as well as probably what he did do for us. Yeah, if you highlight our. Apart from that one game that he had, he played really well for us actually. Akil Wright. Uh, now at Fleetwood. Fleetwood's um, <laughs> obviously got the worst of him, 6.47 rating. Andrew Powell, the, the fans were disappointed to see him leave, but because of his his uh, scout report, he was deemed not good enough, so I opted to get rid of him. Um, hasn't really improved since last time, but his technique and crossing ability was, was never really an issue. He was a very good player for us. Um, Look at him here, he's had a good season to be fair, 7.06. Not as good as when he was with us, but it's still very, very handy. And who can forget when he joined us on loan and got 27 assists back in the day. The belt of all players, uh, the one that was on loan from Stoke City, I want to say. No, the one that was on loan from Wolves. Um, Tommy Buckle, I believe his real name was. Flourished with us, uh, then got picked up a massive injury, and that really hampered his, his progression. And as you can see, he's not really progressed in terms of performance. The chef is one of them, and he, uh, you know, he looks like he's he's done okay in League League Two. Six point seven seven average rating as a defensive midfielder. Jamaican international, of course. Left us to jo go to uh, Cambridge on a free transfer. Then commanded after they got relegated, uh, twenty eight thousand uh, five hundred pounds fee to go to Yeovil in League Two. Other players, Aidan White. He's still at the club, 33 years old now. He's been at the club uh, a couple of years. Been out on, on loan at Barnet this year. Not really played very well. Um, showing his true capabilities. I think he was definitely performing above his capabilities. Um, Dennis Skidmore, player that joined us on loan for a short period of time from Norwich. Uh, played very, very well when he came in for like half a season. Um, but since then, not really lived up to expectations. And he's now playing in the first team for Norwich, who are now in League One after being in the Premier League, which is absolutely crazy and then finally the salt um, Clark Salter uh, joined us from Brighton when uh, we got promoted into League One and did very well for us to be fair I was a little bit sad to see him go 
uh, but I thought we needed better options going into the Premier League uh, and as you can see his League One uh, like career has really gone downhill at Luton Town uh, with Golden Goal FM at the helm. Uh, so, sorry Matt. Um, yeah, so that's all them, them, them guys and obviously the, I'm, I'm the, the sole legend besides Derek Brooks who we can't look at. I think I've just about covered everything there. Uh, apologies if apologies if there is anything I haven't I haven't uh, seen. One last thing, 62% is dropping. Um, so I think we have to have a good season next season, otherwise they might start to get a little bit frustrated with the lack of progress. Um, so that's to come next season. Going to have a different beginning to the season. Hopefully it's, it's going to be enjoyable. But I've got some plans uh, in here, um, ready for the first for the opening. Uh, game of um, season 11 as it will because it will be after 10 years at the club so I'd like to think there'd be a testimonial for me or something and I can somehow play but I don't think it works like that on this game but hopefully you have enjoyed this video if you have want to press that like button if you'd like to see more feel free to subscribe and uh, let us know what you think in the comments below on Twitter and then also try to check us out on Twitch on the rare occasions that I'm on I do tend to put a video on YouTube just saying that I'm going to be going on in the next five minutes or something on the few times that I've been on already. Something I am looking to try and, and get into at some point, like properly, uh, when I find myself having a bit more time. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, until, until like I said next season, I'll see you then. Bye bye.